The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and a righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory, Selah. Lord, open our understanding today and illuminate us and enlighten us, and we may be able to get out of this message all that you have given me to give to these folks. In Jesus' precious name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Now, this morning, I want you to think about the king of glory shall come in. The king of glory shall come in. When will he come in? After the gates have been lifted up, who's going to lift up the gates? Who's going to open the way for the Lord to come through? It's the people of God. It's the people of God's going to have to do something to get the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords operating once again and functioning in this day in which we live. And beloved, I am persuaded that most people in life are not in trouble because they did some major problem or has some major problem. It's because they don't focus their attention on he who has the answer to all things. One of the reasons is because when men sin, they get under guilt and condemnation and they lose sight of what the Lord really has for them. So today, I want to talk about let's open the gates and the king of glory shall come in. Now, who is this king of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Have you ever faced a battle in your life? Have you ever needed some strength you didn't have? I want you to get that this morning. You need, you need some support. You need some strength. You need some power. You need some get up and go. The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. Don't let them hang down because that's not where you're going to find your help. You've got to get your help up. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting door, and the King of glory will come in. You do your part, and the King of glory will come in. I am saying this generation needs to see the King of glory Come on the scene. That's what I'm saying. This generation needs to get a hold of all that God said is going to happen, and we're going to go through these. And I want you to get enthused today that you're going to be a part of those who will bring in the King of glory. You're going to be a part of that. All right, in the first place, the Bible tells us that the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. <clears throat> now, if you go to uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covereth the sea. All right, how's the, how much water covers the sea? Uh, now, I want you to notice that he said the knowledge of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord. You know what? Today we have radio broadcasts going out all across the world. There's quite a number of international broadcasting networks that travel into the uttermost parts of the earth. But are we giving the knowledge of the God of heaven? Are we really um, coming to the knowledge? 
Do we know more about God today than we did yesterday? Are we learning to have a relationship with Him? Uh, in uh, Psalms 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me and I'll give thee the heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. I think what we really need to do is as a church to get involved in getting the whole world saved. Now somebody asked this question one day, do you think you have to save everybody? Well, at least they will save as many as they can. What's wrong with saving people? What's wrong with getting people saved? I have been warned ever since I got into the ministry. Now, Brother Roach, take it easy. You're going to have a burnout. Now, Brother Roach, don't do too much. You're going to have a burnout. And a burnout, burnout. And even a dear old preacher friend gave me a book uh, about burnout so that when I burn out, I know what to do with a burnout. Well, the book is still on the shelf. I've never opened it. I don't know what's in it. All I know, I've never burned out. But uh, you see, just because others are burning out, we don't have to burn out. We don't have to be in the black holes where the stars that burn out go into black hole, they say. But anyway, we've got too many black hole preachers now. What we need, folks, is to realize that the world's out there and somebody's going to miss God unless somebody is concerned. <clears throat> I, I question that people really know what eternity's like. If you, if you really think about it, I just wonder how many people think about what eternity's like. Surely we don't think much of eternity because we don't see it. Or we surely get uh, a different idea. Now here, here's what God says. Hebrews chapter 8. I want you to listen to what God is saying. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel for those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be my people. And they shall be a people, pardon me, to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least even to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. I'm saying today that we have before us somebody trying to stop all mission work from going forth. The message is going out, but what kind of a gospel is going out? <clears throat> We've got a gospel going out, but is it really the gospel that changes lives? There's so many people have said they don't like Daniel Rhodes' preaching because it brings you under conviction. Well, of all things, isn't that a terrible crime? <clears throat> I mean, if a preacher can't bring you under conviction, you, he's got a problem. Because the word convicts. When Peter went to preaching and was out there and they were pricked in their conscience and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? This generation says, if I get pricked in the conscience, I leave the church and go somewhere else where they don't prick my conscience. And what's wrong with the church today is, is they ought to go somewhere else and hear the same thing they heard here. They ought to get so tired of running right. One lady said, everywhere I go, they start preaching about my sin. You know what she did? She blamed me for it because you're praying. <clears throat> I just enjoy that. <laughs> because I think it's time for the church to get some power back and get that gospel out and stop preaching a gospel, get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Number two, God said the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. All right, if God said the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God, now he said it's going to be filled with the glory of the Lord. Why don't you and I lift up the gates and let the king of glory come in? Why don't we let him come in and fill the whole world with his glory? It's coming. God said so. You and I are going to have to do something about it. 
The world's not going to bring in the glory of God. Now, Christians can bring it in when they disobey God because God speaks uh, sometime about the glory appearing because uh, when his glory came, he was bringing judgment. But I want to see the glory of God coming to this earth. <clears throat> Psalm 72 and verse 19 says, And uh, blessed be the glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with the glory. Amen and amen. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Folks, until the glory of God comes into this world, we're not going to be the victorious church that God said we can be. Let the king of glory come in. He wants to come in. He said he'll come when you lift up the gates. And I think we ought to do that, don't you? All right, and he says in Isaiah 6, verse 3, and one cried to the other, that's the seraphims, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door were moved at the voice of him, and the house was filled with smoke. Beloved, I'd like to see the glory of the Lord so visible come on this earth that everybody that's out of the will and plan of God will be shake and tremble. <clears throat> because, folks, there's people in eternity today that I believe they are saying, why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't any preacher preach this stuff to me? Why didn't they tell me what case is this, how bad hell is? We have never seen the glory of God's what's wrong with us. We see a little dive here and a little dive there. But God said the whole earth will be filled with his glory. I'm saying the church needs to rise up and say, let the glory of the Lord shine once again. Oh, come in, king. We open the doors to you. Let the king come in. Let the king and all his glory come in. He said he would do it. Lift the gates up. Get him in here. Knock the props out of under everything else. Let's go. Isaiah 60, verse 2, And behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise unto thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to the light, and the kings to the brightness of his rising. I'm asking you today, why aren't the kings being turned around? Why aren't people's lives being changed? Why are people running out and going doing the same thing they've always done? Why is the king of glory? He's waiting for the gates to be lifted up. And the king of glory shall come in. What's he going to do when he comes in? What's he going to do after the earth is filled with his knowledge? What's he going to do after the earth is filled with his glory? What's he going to do now? Bring me to number three. What's he going to do in the third place? And the Lord shall defeat our enemies, whether he be man or demon. The Lord shall defeat our enemies. Matthew 16, 18 Jesus said, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He will not prevail. That means that you and I have that promise, the gates of hell shall not prevail. They won't as long as we lift up the gates. Lift up your heads, O oh, your gates, be you lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I'm telling you, Satan's got a problem when the king of glory comes in. When the king of glory comes in, he goes out. Step around like we mean something. I mean, we're victorious. No longer a bunch of wimps going somewhere. We are devoted to this thing. We're in, we're in it to stay. I've never seen so many people giving up, quitting. Say it's no use. You come up with such ideas as this. Well, I know the Bible says that the gates of hell shall never prevail against the church, but it sure looks to me like he's doing it. Well, the reason he's doing it because we haven't lifted up the gates and opened the doors and let them come in. I think we've still got people outside that the Bible speaks about in Revelation. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Let the king of glory come in. Isaiah 59, 19 so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy <clears throat> shall come in like a flood, 
the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I'm telling you, folks, this is Bible promise to those who have the King of glory coming in. When the enemy comes in, the Spirit of the Lord rises up and says, No, you don't come in on these people. No, sir, you're not coming in here. God's going to lift up a standard and say, No, you're not coming in. These people belong to me. Don't you touch them. Whether they're man or beast to whoever they are, you try to touch the people of God that are on the Lord's side and you're going to pay dear for it. He's going to say, that's it. Don't you criticize my people. Don't you touch my anointed. Don't you do my prophets any harm. Hebrews 2 and verse 14 says, For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. I tell you, when the king of glory comes in, we don't have to worry about fearing death because the Bible says they overcame him with the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. That's what Jesus said. If you give up your life for him, you'll gain it. We can't understand that because we've got to have the king of glory come in, folks. <clears throat> And it says in Colossians chapter 2, 15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the one that's going to overthrow everything once we get to the place where we let the king come in. The king shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. That's who he is. Don't you touch God's people once they get the power of God moving in their life, once the king of glory has come in, once that church has got the power where he says the gates of hell shall not prevail, you may as well mark it down, folks. There's a body of believers coming forth in this generation that's going to overthrow everything, and we're going to sit up on the throne and say, yes, the king of glory has come in. And we'll reign together with him in life. That's what the Bible says we're supposed to do is reign in life but one Jesus. Most people are going around, would you just pray for me? Oh, I'm telling you folks, I'm so tired of uh, people defeated and downhearted and <clears throat> guilt and shame and reproach and call themselves Christians and, and fighting and quarreling. I tell you, it's time for the fathers to rise up in the home and say, don't you touch this family. Don't you come into this home well, I tell you, when the men wants to again take over leadership <clears throat> and say, no, sir, I tell you what, I'm the spiritual leader of this home, and there's no devil going to come in and mess my marriage, my children, nobody else up. I'm the spiritual leader of this church, and there's no devil that's going to come in here and mess this church up, because I'm telling you, this church is not mine. It belongs to the King of glory, and the King of glory is coming in. He'd go come in more than he's ever come in. <clears throat> and I'm saying this church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. And all the affiliated churches, the gates of hell is not prevailing against them either. Somebody's going to raise up and say yes, say amen. I'm saying, folks, it's, it's time for somebody to rise up, put that sword up in the air and say, oh, no. No, you're not going to mess me up. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of, re, uh, of, of being defeated. I'm tired of being childish. I'm tired of childish Christians. Let's rise up and let the king of glory come in. Church, we need to get the gates up. We need to let the doors open and let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord Almighty. He's a strong in battle. Oh, but oh, you don't know what all I have been going through. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. <clears throat> Number four, <clears throat> the Lord shall fight against our enemies and scatter them. Whether they be man or devil, I'll tell you what, don't you mess with God's people. Once the king of glory has come in and he said he'll do it, 
He's not talking about some sweet day when life is o'er we shall meet above. He's talking about now opening the gates. You got family members out there living like the devil. It's time for you to rise up and say, Lord, let my enemies be scattered. Boy, listen to some of these Bible verses. <clears throat> Numbers 10, 35. Moses is out there taking the children through the places he needed to go. Every time he met an enemy, he had the victory. Numbers 10, 35, and it came to pass when the ark set forth that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when he rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. I like that. I like to see Moses just saying, All right, we're moving. We're, we're, we're going. <clears throat> I tell you what, I'd like to see you get up on Monday morning. And you say, all right, I'm going to work today. <clears throat> Lord, arise and let my enemies be scattered. Let your enemies be scattered. Arise, Lord, I'm coming through. Open up the gates and let the king of glory come in. He's mighty in battle. He's able to take care of your enemies and scatter them things. I'm telling you folks, it's time for the church to rise up and say, I've had all the defeats I'm going to have. And uh, Lord, scatter those enemies. Get them out of my way. I'm coming through. Instead of going around, oh, somebody spoke evil of me. Oh, somebody hurt my feet. Why does that make any difference? You, if you're living the way God says live, you're going to have enemies. But I'm going to tell you something else that you need to know is God will come against them. You better not touch those when the king of glory comes into this church in the fullest measure. You better leave his people alone. You better not find fault with his people. You better just let your fingers off of them. You better keep your mouth shut because <clears throat> it may come back on you. Through God we shall do violently, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. That's Psalm 60, verse 12, and Psalms 108 and verse 13. Let me read that again. I'm going to give you the reference. Psalms 60, verse 12, and the same repeat, meaning it's a double we promise here, <clears throat> Psalms 108 and verse 13. Through God, we shall do violently. Folks, I'm telling you, you know what the word violent means? I mean, we are the violent, take it by force. We're going through and we're saying, all right, I'm tired of this thing. I'm tired of the devil messing my children up. I'm tired of the devil trying to do this to somebody else. We're coming through and through God, we shall do violently. Open up your gates, O oh ye. People, open up the gates. The King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. Dear Lord, if I could ever get people to believe we don't have to go around living in sin and having addictions and stuff. I mean, grab those addictions and say, no more will you trespass in my life. Habits and everything else. No, sir. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. I'm going to enjoy life. I'm going through with it. I got this message at 2 o'clock this morning, and I was thrilled. Lord woke me up and gave me these points. I said, Yeah. The Lord wants somebody to rise up and say, King of glory, come in. Until we get finished with our pity party stuff, until we get finished with all our childishness and start growing up. Some people take seven years to grow up, others take 70, and some never grow up. Why can't we do something? <clears throat> There's a preacher one day was saying, in a public meeting, he said, some of these men are not as mature 
when they're 67 as some of them are when they're 17. A woman sitting on the front row said, and some 67. <laughs> that was a pretty big slam at her husband. <clears throat> you know what, folks? You and I don't have to be defeated. You and I don't have to be pressured with anybody around here. I'm telling you, nobody needs to put pressure on us and make us do what we ought to do. Our God is a violent God, and he says you're going to, through him, we'll do violently. Psalms 18 and verse 17 through 19 says, He delivered me from my strong enemy. And from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also in a large place. He delivered me because he delighteth in me. I'll tell you, folks, God delighteth in you. He wants you to be a winner. You can't handle your enemies. You can't do it. He says, I couldn't handle the situation. They were too strong for me. The devil's too strong for you. You can't handle him. But in the mighty, majestic name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I tell you, every saint on earth has the privilege and power to overthrow the powers of the enemy and walk up with triumph and say, yes, I triumphed in the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Who will lift up the gates today? Who will swing open the everlasting doors and allow the King of glory to come in? Are we going to do it or are we going to still go around? And, uh, oh, I tell you, folks, get rid of your cradle. That'll help. <clears throat> Got that beautiful song, Rock Me to Sleep in a Cradle of Love. I'm not trying to be sarcastic about it. It's a beautiful song. But I tell you, don't put me in no cradle. <clears throat> Give me a sword. I'm telling you, folks, I'm the, I'm the leader of this church, and I'm going to lead you people through this valley and through the darkness and through everything. I'm determined we're going to win. This church is on the winning side. Let me show you something. <clears throat> when you win, you know what you do? You take the W, w off and you're in. <laughs> We're in this thing. I've, oh, don't look at the battle. Look to him who shall do violently. Show him that is the triumph, the great, mighty, almighty God is the battler for us. He's the fighter. He's the warrior. He's the one that's going to see us through. It's his name as we're going through on. I tell you, I wish some of you people would get to the place where you just pick your Bible up and say, I'll make a declaration to stay. Find some Bible verse according to this. This is what my Bible says. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And I'm going to tell you right now, Satan, and all your hosts are making a declaration to you this day. You're not running this family, and you're not running my children, and you're not running my home, and you're not running them kids that we like to call them. I'm tired of this thing. Back up against it. If you understand that every time you and your wife fight, the devil's behind it. Where's God? He's standing there with the sword saying, here it is. Here, here, here's what you need. Oh, I'll take a sword and hit her with it. No. <laughs> no. You take the sword and defend your marriage. The Bible, where does the Bible say anything about when you're in a fight? Get mad. Not your wife or anybody else. Husbands, love your wives. Be not bitter against them. <clears throat> Number five, the church shall operate in the mighty power of God once again. <clears throat> when the king of glory shall come in, the church shall operate once again in the mighty power. <clears throat> 
Where is the power of the church today? People have tried everything to get the power coming in the church. They try this and they try that and they try something else and they try this and it doesn't work. I'll tell you who's going to bring the power back into the church. Lift up your gates, O oh, ye everlasting doors. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors and the King of glory shall come in. That's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the great I am, the awesome God, the great deliverer. He's the one that's going to see us through. It doesn't matter if a beast comes on the scene and he calls himself the Antichrist or whatever. We are winners. We're in this thing. And I'll tell you, folks, I'll remind you once again, God didn't promise us. Uh, now, I'll give you a little hope here. I mean, if you live perfect and you're always absolute upright, and you never make a mistake in your life again, and you never do anything wrong, I'll give you eternal life. He didn't say that. Beloved, I think we have lost sight of eternal life. My Bible tells us to lay hold on eternal life. Don't let anybody take your hope away from you. The hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. It's a hope there that's going to keep us through at the very end. There's no devil big enough to take it away from us. Jesus said that there's nobody can pluck him out of our hand, us out of his hands. Now go playing games with God. Get in this thing and shout the victory. Say, I am a child of God. The devil say, yeah, but you have a lot of weaknesses. Get over your weaknesses. Rise up. I tell you, the Lord God Almighty is waiting for somebody to say, come in, O King of glory. Lord, strong and mighty in battle, come in. Yes, operating in the mighty power of God. Paul said in, in uh, Romans chapter 15 and verse 19 that he was operating through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and all around Lycomia I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I'm telling you folks, that's the message today. We've got to fully preach the gospel of Christ and there's nobody going to come to this church and leave it and say nobody ever told me. The Bible says a few will be saved. It's not a bad deal. Man, I will tell you folks, it's not a bad deal to be saved. I mean, I think today, I listen to some of these people, you think if you got saved, you really lost everything. You have to give up so much. Oh, you mean you have to give up your heartaches? Your hangovers. You have to give up waking up vomit after you've been drunk. You have to get up, give up beating your wife and making her black and blue. Oh, what are you giving up? I'll tell you what, I was in sin. I found that sin has its pleasure, but it's limited. But I found the pleasure that comes from Almighty God has no limit to it. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory even when you're going through the worst trials and tests of life because the King of glory has come in. That's why we're not going to go through this thing <clears throat> trying to pity God. I've said people can't understand God. He thinks God didn't do what he's supposed to do. God just never made it. You know, God said this and God said that, but God couldn't do what he said. So then we get a Band-Aid and put it on his knee and try to cover it all up. I tell you, the problem is not God. The problem is us. The King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord almighty, that's who he is. Don't sound like mighty stuff going on in your home sometimes, does it? I dare you fathers to go to your house. You're the leader of that home. You're the head. I dare you to go to your house. 
and walk in that place and say, King of glory, come into this place. Teach me how to be a leader, a spiritual father. Teach me how to be that leader, to be that champion that I can teach, train, and lead my family. Fathers, you're responsible for where your family goes to. And God didn't say the women are responsible. It's the dad's responsibility where your children are. Do you know 90%? <clears throat> they tell me 90% of the people in prison hate their father. That's an awful thing. They hate their father. Well, I'm going to tell you what, fathers, let's turn around. Let's knock the percent out. Let the king of glory come into our home. We can change. Can't we change? Sure we can change. <clears throat> the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope of your calling. And then he goes on to say that God has raised up the church far above everything that's going on in this world and gave them the fullness of God over in the feast. And I don't have time to get to that. The church does not have the fullness of God. Most of them don't. We've tried to get music to try to tickle the ears of the people. <clears throat> Some preacher had an assistant pastor that reminds me of Eric and Kevin. <clears throat> he got this pastor to preach whenever he needed somebody to fill in. And the fellow began to preach against sin and tell him what sin will do. And the people went to the pastor and said, Pastor, that boy's insulting us. You're going to get rid of him. <clears throat> He's making us feel bad when we come and listen to him. And we want you to get rid of him. And the pastor goes to his assistant pastor and says, Now, Eric, I'm sorry, <clears throat> but people don't like your preaching. So I'm going to have to dismiss you. Now watch this. He dismissed them. He dismissed him. <clears throat> now, God steps into the picture, and the people rebelled against the pastor. Because nobody's preached against sin. Now rebellion came against the pastor. And guess what they did to the pastor? Kicked him out. Said, we don't want you to pastor us no more. The man lost his job. <clears throat> I'd like to ask you a question. There's a couple of preachers sitting in there today and some mothers that are supposed to be preachers someday. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you something. You stand before Almighty God and He looks at you. You got your head bowed. Where's all these church members that I have to cast out? Why didn't you preach them the gospel? You stand speechless. The answer is, I was afraid it hurt their feelings. I was afraid they'd leave. This preacher said one reason that he didn't want his, um, <clears throat> that preacher preaching against sin is because one of his best donors was living in sin and he didn't want to insult him. Now he lost a donor too. Their friends, Somebody could come in here today and they could preach to me and, and preach some real serious message and say, I'll tell you, Daniel Rhodes, sin is going to take anybody to hell. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're living a homosexual life, you aren't going to make it. And all this, it's not going to fizz me because I'm not a homosexual. I'm not interested in that trash. That's as low as you can get it. Why did it not affect me? Because I'm not guilty. That's why. And every dumb thing I did in the past is all forgiven, and I'm not even guilty of that. We got preachers that'll try to put guilt and condemnation on you folks. You let the Holy Ghost do that. Don't you try to proud that on people. <clears throat> Number six. The saints shall win the battle. Now here's what the Bible says. The saints shall win the battle. I want you to think with me now. Oh, I'm telling you, this just really thrills me now. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. 
the enemies of God will make war against the Lamb. Watch this. They shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. I'll tell you what, how would you like to be riding behind that white horse? Let's go down and look at the white horse now. <clears throat> And see what happens when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is on that white horse. Hey, if you will, turn with me to Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19. <clears throat> Last book in the New Testament. I tell you what, folks, the saints are still going to be the winners. Now, I'm going to tell you what. The saints are going to be the winners. Look at verse 11. <clears throat> and it says... And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fire, and linen, clean, white and clean, and out of his mouth go the sharp sword, that with it it should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and tread the wine press of the fierceness of his wrath of the Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice, saying unto the fowls uh, that fly in the midst of the heaven. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of the mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that do set there on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both great and small I'm telling you folks which side of the army do you want to be on you want to be on behind the king of kings and the lord of lords coming through and the fowls of the air come down as you kill these fellows and the, the bones are picked clean by kites and buzzards and you name it. Oh, I tell you, I like the picture of that great big captain on the horse today riding through this land and saying, I am king of kings and lord of lords. He's got on his vesture and on his thigh written, king of kings and lord of lords. And he got his vesture dipped in blood pure and clean so that every saint that's behind him is reminded I'm cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And folks, it's that blood that causes us to overcome. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death because they got something. They got a hold of the King of Kings. The Lord of glory has come in. Strong God, the Almighty, the King of Kings and the Lord Lord of Lords, and he's strong in battle, ready to take over. Amen. Don't tell me we got to go around limping and gone through this world, sinking sand. Down we go, dragging bottom. I'm telling you, folks, it's time for somebody to rise up. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to the day <clears throat> when there'll be a shout saying, Y'all can eat them, fellas. They're not eating me. Boy, I mean, what a horrible day that is. But for us, it's going to be a glorious day. I'm telling you, folks, I'm calling for every backslidden Christian to turn around today and say, no, I'm going to stop backsliding. I'm coming forth out of this thing. I am going to renew my mind. I'm going to think different. I have the King of kings and the Lord of lords coming. And I'd like for us to open the gates of our door and say, come in, Almighty. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King in glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. That's who he is. 
Don't you touch my children. Don't you touch my marriage. Don't you touch my job. Don't you touch anything I've got. You get your fingers off my automobiles. You get your fingers off of my pocketbook. You get your fingers off of everything I've got. I've got something that will knock him back and it's called the Word of God. You get your hands off my marriage. Don't you touch that. And the very first thing he'll try to do is come up and say, Robin, how don't you get mad at him? You know, why do people listen to that kind of stuff? <clears throat> you don't have to have that. He that hath ears, let him hear. Now I come to number seven. <clears throat> Here, number seven, every knee shall bow and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> Isaiah 54 and verse 21, begin reading. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who had declared from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have I not the Lord? That there is no God beside me? A just God and Savior? There's none beside me. Look unto me and be saved, all ye ends of the earth. <clears throat> For I am the God, and there's none else. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. And the reference is <clears throat> Isaiah 45, verses 21 through 23. All right, now listen. Every knee is going to bow. The backslider is going to bow his knee and say, I disobeyed you, Lord. Your Lord, you're Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. Madam O'Hare is going to bow her knee and declare, yes, you are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I was one of the popular atheists down on earth, but I know you're God. You're Lord of Lords and King of Kings. The agnostic is going to bow his knee and say, yes, Lord, you are. Lord, when it's too late. But I'll tell you where the blessedness is when you bow your knee right here on this earth, right here, and say, I bow my knee and declare that God Almighty is the awesome God and that His Son, Jesus Christ, is the Lord of my life. And I bow my knee indicating I surrender and submit to Him. <clears throat> Oh, there's nothing like dying when all is well. There's nothing like dying when you don't have to face death with fear because the Lord has taken away the fear of death that we just read about earlier. <clears throat> to get another witness on this, in Romans chapter 14 and verse 11 and 12 it says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself before God. To God. Now listen. Today, <clears throat> you know, I don't understand people. Get under guilt and condemnation, want to run, hide somewhere. That's not what you do. You don't run from the Lord when he's trying to convict you. That convicting power of God, if you realize when God is convicting a sinner, he is calling for him. He isn't giving you up. As long as you've got that conviction coming, he's still saying, come, come, come. I think that's the glorious part. <clears throat> come, come. I still want you. Change. Listen. You think that your old life is going to be a blessing? It isn't. It's a curse. Yes, but if I have to give this up, I haven't given one thing up in my whole lifetime that was replaced by something many times better.
this church has a decoration before God because I've made that decoration. We're going through this thing. <clears throat> We're going to bow our knee and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of this church. Daniel Rhodes is not Lord of this church. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of this church. Could you say with me, be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the King of glory come in? <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2, 8, the third witness. Says Jesus was being found in the fashion of a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of the things in heaven and the things in the earth and the things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I tell you, everything in the sea, everything is going to bow and declare Jesus Christ is Lord. Beloved, there is nothing in this whole world that's anywhere close to what you and I have. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you as I bring this message toward the close, I'm going to tell you today, I don't care where you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how many sins you committed. I don't care where you've been. I know one thing. God is looking for somebody today to make a decision that I'm tired with a pity party life. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being afflicted. I'm tired of being defeated. I'm tired of being down and out. I'm tired of addictions. I'm tired of habits. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of all this stuff. And I'm coming to the Lord. I had to make that decision years ago, and I stuck with it. I used to have so many struggles in life, and up and down, and in and out, and in and out, and down and up, till I got on my knees, and I said, Lord God Almighty, I bow my knee before you this day, and I'm declaring from this day forward that I serve no other beside you. And I didn't go out to it like a lot of Christians do and say, I don't care how rough it gets. I don't care how many temptations I go through. I, I do care. I'm not adding that to nothing. I'll let the Lord take care of that. You might be a wife beater. You might be a, um, a high-tempered, high-geared person. You might be, and I wasn't looking at you adding to that, sister. <clears throat> You may be anybody, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You bow that knee before God and say, all right, I'm finished with this life. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <clears throat> Once you're in, all you need to do is just add a W and you win. Right? <clears throat> and you and I can do it. There's not a person in this building can't do it. There's, listen, I'm persuaded better things than you fellows than that. I'm persuaded. Listen, I have a high appreciation for everybody that sits in this church. You say, well, I got some growing to do. Well, let's start right now. <clears throat> I'd like to ask some of you that want to take a long time to grow. I want to ask you something. How would you like to plant a field of corn? You come out, the corn is supposed to be tasseling, but it's only about six inches high. And you say, what's wrong with this corn? Oh, I'm just a Christian that hasn't grown much yet, but I'm still corn. When's the fruit coming? Now the frost comes and kills the corn, there's no fruit. Where's the grain? Oh, well, I reckon it was God's will that I would get frosted before I matured. That's the philosophy this generation has. And it don't hold up very good. <clears throat> Did you ever plant a watermelon? And you watched him grow, and you watched him grow, and you watched him grow. And just before he got mature, it frosted and killed him. And you lay him back hoping he'll mature after he's been dead, you know. And you take that knife and you split him open. 
And it's just a little bit of pink in it, not much of anything. <clears throat> when we get to the other side, what is your life going to be like when you get to the other side? When the roll is called up yonder, what are we going to do? Beloved, can you <clears throat> with me today say again, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye li uh, even lift him up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And what will happen when the king of glory comes in? What's going to happen then? Folks, everything will take a change. This church is going to take a change. Everything will take a change. And I'm appealing today, folks, let's get our armor on and let's go. He will scatter our enemies. He will scatter our enemies and he'll send us down through there. <clears throat> we read here about the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God. Number two, we talked about the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Number three, we talked about our enemies being defeated and the Lord would chase them back. Number four, we talked about the Lord will fight and scatter our enemies. Let me see. Number three, I didn't read that and write or something. The Lord shall defeat our enemies, and then he'll scatter them in number four. And number five, the church shall operate once again in her mighty power. And number six, the saints shall win in the battle. Well, we're on the winning side. And number seven, every knee shall bow. And I'm telling you, my knee has already bowed. Has yours? Has your name bowed already? If it has, praise God, you have it made. far better than this I'm homesick for heaven where loved ones have gone who are safe in his wonderful care if we could but hear from our loved ones so dear they all say they do.